Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson, and I'm glad that you got to join us at our women's meeting this Thursday. And I, uh, let's go ahead and get started with prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, grant us grace. Father, open our ears that we can hear. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. And I ask this in Jesus' name and Father, my heavenly Father, let us only see Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's begin. We are going to uh, go to 1 Peter 3, why we, why we are here. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they may also without the word be won by the conversation, that is behavior, of the wives. Like here we know, we don't have to preach to them, we live it. They can't help but see it. While they behold your chaste conversation, behavior, coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair or the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Don't let that be what we know you by, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, not corruptible. Do you know that there can be a place in you that is not corruptible? That is what happens. Even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. How are we going to do that? We're going to get the meek and the quiet man in us. And that meek and quiet man that we are getting in us has all power. That meek and quiet man in us has all power power. That meek and quiet man in us sits at the right hand of God above every principality, power, might, and dominion. That is the meek and quiet man in us. Well, if you know he's in you, you can be meek and quiet. All right? Now, turn with me to Mark, I mean John 10, our lovely verse. John 10, verse 35, Jesus speaking. He says, is it not written in your law? I said you are God's. But if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and here's what I'm after, and the scripture cannot, cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. You know what that means? The scripture cannot be broken. The scripture will never fail. It will never fail. The only thing that's going to fail is our faith in it, our unbelief. But the scripture will never fail. If you get your faith in that, then you will never fail. And what you're after will absolutely come to pass. Why? The scripture cannot be broken. And with that, we're going to look today at something that I want you to, as I used to say, or, and I still say it, I guess, you got any guts? What we're going to look at today is going to take some guts. It's going to take some courage. And how we're going to look at it is we are not going to consider anything but that word that can't be broken. We are not going to consider our upbringing. We are not going to consider the church that we grew up in. We are not going to consider all the movies that we have seen. We are not going to consider any book that we have read. We're going to lay that all aside and we're going to look at only the word of God. And I'm going to show you some things today that it's going to take some courage to look at. But when we get it, when we get it in here, it'll work. Now, go with me to Romans 10, what we have been looking at. Romans 10, verse 14. How is it then that they call on him and whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him, believe in Jesus, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear about Jesus unless without a preacher? So now we need a preacher that preaches about Jesus so that we can hear it. It says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written. Did you know that some preachers aren't sent? 
Do you know that some preachers aren't sent? One day, I remember Dole's testimony. Dole said, well, if, if he's not sent, how did he get up there? And God said, he walked up there like you do. But I didn't send him. Make sure the one you're listening to has been sent. All right? It says, and as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. We're talking about the gospel here. The gospel of peace and bringing glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Paul is talking about the gospel here. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report? And we see that Isaiah 53, 1. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Verse 17. So then faith, faith, faith. What we're after. Faith. That's what we're after. That's what we want. We want faith. Why? So we can walk this word out. So that we can get the things promised to us. It says, then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But what was the word of God that Paul was talking about? He was talking about the? Oh, ladies. He was, you're going to football game. He's talking about the? Much better. All right, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. We are going to look at the absolute bona fide definition of the gospel because if we hear that gospel the word of God that cannot be broken says if we hear that gospel if we hear the gospel that'll help our faith it'll grow our faith first Corinthians 15 verse 1 moreover brethren Paul again speaking I declare unto you the gospel so Paul right here is going to declare unto us that gospel, that what we hear, it will bring us faith. It's so simple. The recipe is right here. The gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received. Now you got to receive it and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless I believe, unless you have believed in vain. Do you see you can believe and then not believe? And you can believe in vain? There is no such thing as once saved, always saved. And that word if proves it right here. If you keep in memory. And if it is not in vain. Now, what is that gospel? What is is the gospel for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received Paul received it first how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures there is your definition of the gospel Every time the Bible refers to the gospel, that's what the gospel is. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus according to the scriptures. Not according to the movie you saw. Not according to the pictures you saw in the gallery. The gospel is according to the scriptures. Do you get that? Do you get that? We got to look at the word of God and nothing else. Nothing else. That takes courage, but it also brings the faith. Now, go with me to, let's go to Romans 1. I want us to see something here about that gospel and why we look at it. Romans 1 verse 16. For I, this is Paul again speaking, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He is not ashamed. He is not afraid to walk in it. He's not afraid to use it. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And we know what the gospel is now. That Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. Why is he not ashamed of it? Because for it is. It is. It is your subject. Is is your predicate. And the power of God is your object. Yes, 
I used to teach grammar. All right. It is the power of God unto salvation. Where is the power? It's in the gospel. That's right. The power's in the gospel. You know why? When Jesus rose from the dead, what is it that he said in Matthew? All power has been given unto me. All power. All power has been given unto me. And how did he get it? Through his death, burial, and resurrection. There's where the power is. It's in the gospel. Now with that, let's go to Galatians 3. Galatians 3. I'm going to begin in verse 5. And we're going to examine ourselves. Verse 5. Paul speaking. He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit, and that Spirit is capitalized, so it's talking about the Holy Ghost. It says, He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and, look at that, and worketh miracles among you. So now we got somebody here that ministers the Holy Ghost and worketh miracles among you. Look at this question. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Does he do it by the works of the law? That includes the Ten Commandments. We know that by the scriptures. It includes the Ten Commandments. Does the man in our midst and the woman that ministers the Holy Ghost to you and miracles, does he do it by the Ten Commandments or does he do it by the hearing of faith? The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. Have you ever, have you ever watched a preacher stand up and say, thou shalt not commit adultery and somebody gets healed? Have you ever watched a preacher stand up and say, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's donkey. And somebody breaks out in tongues. No. No. The man that does miracles and ministers the Holy Ghost, does he do it by the works of the law, the Ten Commandments, or does he do it by the hearing of faith? And we just read in Romans 10 that hearing of faith is the gospel. It's the gospel. Let's go on. You mean to tell me, I can hear you squirming now, You mean to tell me that the Ten Commandments, we're not supposed to follow them? Listen, let's keep going. He therefore that ministereth you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? This is the Apostle Paul talking, folks. This isn't a nobody. This is the Apostle Paul sent to the Gentiles. It says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Do you know that Abraham never never followed the Ten Commandments. Do you know that Abraham never followed the Ten Commandments? You're saying, you're kidding me. They weren't even around yet. It was another 400 years before we got the Ten Commandments. Abraham didn't follow the Ten Commandments, and yet Abraham walked by faith. It says, as Abraham believed God, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Know you therefore, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, that's us, through faith. Justify, that means take all your sins away that doesn't, either. not even there. That's justify. That before they would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Of faith, as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. 
And look at this next verse. But that no man, no man, do you see this? You got your eyes on this? No man, and that includes women, is justified by the law in the sight of God. Do you see that? No man has all his sins taken away to where they're not even there by the law. Folks, you can't get it by following the Ten Commandments. You cannot walk with God in the Ten Commandments. And he's saying that right here. They are not of faith. That, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just, the just, the ones that have been justified, the ones that don't have any sin, live by faith. They live by faith. They live by faith. And look at this next verse. And the law. That includes the Ten Commandments is not of faith. The law is not of faith. Because the man, it says, the man that doeth them shall live in them. And we know by Romans 7, every time we tell ourselves, thou shalt not, thou surely will by day's end. I won't ever lie again. And in the next five minutes, you just lied. The law is not of faith. Now, go down with me to verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But, got that word but? But, the scripture has concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. And the next verse, but before faith came, look at this. Before faith came, we were kept under the law. You didn't, you weren't born baptized in the Holy Ghost. You weren't born justified. You didn't come out of your mother's womb a perfect child, sanctified under the Father. You weren't. It says so in the Word. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. It's the beginning. Now look at this next part. It says that before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith. Shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Do you know by that verse, if you try to keep the Ten Commandments and walk in faith, that Ten Commandments will shut up up your faith. That Ten Commandments, the, that law, thou shalt, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not go here, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's donkey, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt love thy parents. If you follow that, it will shut up your faith. Says it in the Word. The law is not of faith. And you know what? Turn with me real quick to Philippians 3. We're going to look at a man that walked perfect in the law. Perfect in the law. And see what he says about this. Philippians 3, I'm going to begin in verse 5. This is Paul talking about himself. He says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. This guy was cream of the crop. As touching the law of Pharisee. Now the Pharisees were the strictest of the law. They followed the law to the letter. And that's what Paul was. And keep, let's keep going. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Now look at this. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. 
blameless. The apostle Paul, when he was un, a Pharisee, was blameless. Followed the law to the letter. Perfect in the law. Blameless. And what did Paul say? And well, I want to ask you a question before we go on. Is it written anywhere? Anywhere in the word. When Paul was following that law perfectly, that he ever did a miracle. He never did. Blameless in the law, never a miracle. Never the power of God demonstrated. Never. So what does he say in the next verse? But what things were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ. That included the Ten Commandments. That included the Ten Commandments. The law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. And you say, well, that's clear. Oh, yeah? And then you try to follow it. Do you know that the only reason that you are justified the only reason that your sins are forgiven is because Jesus paid for them by his blood. It has nothing to do with you. You cannot be perfect enough to be justified. You cannot be sweet enough to be justified. You can't act right to be justified. You aren't justified by how pretty you are. You aren't justified by being the victim thinking you're ugly. That doesn't justify you. The only thing, the only thing that justifies you is the blood of Jesus. What he paid for you on the cross. And when we try to obey that, when we try to walk in that, we find that our brains and our hearts are saying, well, I can't believe that today because I didn't read enough. Well, God won't do this for me today because I was angry earlier. You're still under the law. If your righteousness is by nothing but the blood of Jesus, then you've missed it. Then you've missed it. Well, uh, the, you know, I can't be prosperous today because, because, you know, I didn't pray enough last night. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. You have been given prosperity by the death of burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us. Isn't that glorious? Isn't that glorious? Because we can't do it. We try. And we try. We try to be nice to the neighbors and maybe that'll justify us. We try to be sweet to the husband and we think that's going to justify us. We think that staying up all night and praying in tongues is going to justify us. Not if there's any, no faith to it. It was a waste of your time. What justifies you? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and his blood. That is the only thing. That is the only thing. That is what gets us healed. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, not us. Not us. Not what, what we do. Not with what, how we feel. Do you get that? Not in how we feel. You may feel lousy. You may feel condemned. But you can get back in that blood and you can get rid of the condemnation. That cross, that burial, that resurrection. Jesus satisfied the Father. You didn't. 
You didn't satisfy the Father. Jesus did for you. For you. Jesus satisfied the Father concerning you. That's why he went to the cross. That's why every bone of his was out of joint. That's why he took on all your sickness and disease. That's why he took on your poverty. That's why he took on your curses on that body because he was going to satisfy the father concerning you. He was going to pay the price that needed to be paid for you. And the father saw his travail in hell. Yes, Jesus went to hell. That's where all sinners go. And Jesus died a sinner. He died a sinner. Yes, he did. He died a sinner. You know why? He had your sin on him. He was carrying your sin, not his, yours. He was paying for you. That beautiful man in that broken body was paying for us. And he went to hell for us, to pay for us. And he never let go of what the father promised him. And in three days, the father was satisfied. He was satisfied with what Jesus did for us. And he raised Jesus from the dead. And the moment he raised Jesus from the dead, your sins were forgiven. That's why he was raised from the dead. Your sins were forgiven. That's why he was raised from the dead. Your sins, the sacrifice, was accepted. It was accepted. God said, that's enough. The payment is enough. Get him out. And he was raised from the dead. And when we think that our sins haven't been paid for, they have to be or Jesus wouldn't be out of the grave. One day I asked the father, and this was what back about well, 20 years ago, I said, why is Jesus not still in hell paying for my sins? Because I figured it would take a while. I did. So why isn't he still there paying for all of our sins? And that's what God revealed to me. He saw the travail of Jesus' soul, and he satisfied the Father. It was a sacrifice accepted. That is why your prosperity works. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your feelings. The Word of God cannot be broken. The Word of God is a million times stronger than your feelings. You got that? I'll say it again to get it in you. The Word of God is a million times stronger than your feelings. And it'll bust through those feelings if you will just keep believing. Don't look at your feelings. Abraham couldn't. If Abraham would have looked at his feelings, Isaac wouldn't be here. He couldn't look at his feelings. He couldn't look at his circumstances. He kept his heart, his mind on what God had promised. He kept his heart and mind on the word of God. And he got Isaac. It's the same thing with us. It's the same thing with us. It is not the law. It is not the law. You cannot obey the law and Jesus at the same time. The law is not of faith. We we'll may probably continue this a little bit later next week, but I want to say, I want to keep going. And to do this, to walk in this gospel, to walk in a sacrifice that was satisfied the Father, to walk in the power that came when Jesus was raised from the dead, that power is available to us. It is available to us to walk in that. You have to be born again. You have to be. And it is not difficult to be born again. What do we do to be born again? You repeat after me. It's in, it's in Romans 10. To, to confess with your mouth. You confess with your mouth. But it's in the heart first. That Jesus, Jesus, repeat after me. Jesus Come into my life. Be my Lord. 
guide me, lead me, fix me. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, do you know that one of the things about that law, if we will look at, I believe we'd, the Lord would have us look at this. If you will go back to Galatians. I want to continue in verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us. Christ has redeemed us. Jesus has redeemed us. That's ransomed us out from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And we have studied this before, that Jesus was cursed when he was put on the cross. A curse from God. Says it in Deuteronomy, anything hanging on a tree is a curse of God. Jesus became that curse for us, for you. Jesus became that curse for you. The curse of not following the law. You don't follow the law exactly, you're cursed. That's where your heart disease comes from. That's where your sickness comes from. That's where your poverty comes from. That's where the curses, where you can't keep uh, an appliance running more than two years. That's a curse. And it came, it came from the law. But Jesus redeemed us from the law and redeemed us from the curse. And I want to pray for us. I want you to join your pray faith with mine. And let's get redeemed of this curse, some of this curse of the law. All right? Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that we are redeemed. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus from the curse of the law. Father, I thank you. We are redeemed. We are redeemed by the curse. By the blood of Jesus from the curse of the law. Father, we are redeemed. We are redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed from these curses. We are loosed away from them by the blood of Jesus. I give thanks. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. We are redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed by the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. Give me your hand, Claudia. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been loosed away. We've been ransomed from it by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Not us. The blood of Jesus redeemed us. Father, I break these curses over her. I break them. I break them in the name of Jesus. She's been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I break these curses in the name of Jesus. I break these curses. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them. That blood breaks them. That blood breaks them in the name of Jesus. I break them now. I break them. 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 I break them in Jesus' name. I break these curses in the name of Jesus. I break them. I break them. I break them. Keep going. I break them. I break these curses in Jesus' name. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. I break them. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. 
by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. I break them. I break them. I break it. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them by that blood. I break them by that blood. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them by that blood. I break them. I break them by that blood. 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 I break them. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break this curse by the blood of Jesus. I break this curse by the blood of Jesus. I break this curse by the blood of Jesus. I break this curse by the blood of Jesus. I break this curse by the blood, 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 by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. I break these curses. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. I break these curses. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. By the blood. 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 By the blood of Jesus. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. Amen. 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 We break these curses by the blood of Jesus. We break this curse by the blood of Jesus. We break these curses by the blood, by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. 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 I break them. 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 I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them. I break them in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. I break them by that blood. I break them. I break them. It's the blood. Amen. 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 I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed by the blood. We are redeemed. I break every curse. We are redeemed by the blood. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. We're redeemed by the blood. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood, we're redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I break this curse. I break this curse. I break you. I break you. I break you in Jesus' name. I break you. I break you in Jesus' name. I break you. 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 I break you in Jesus' name. I break you in Jesus' name. By Jesus' name, I break you in Jesus' name. I break you, I break you, I break you, I break you, I break this curse. I break you in Jesus' name. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I break this curse in Jesus' name. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I break you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come out of there. I break this curse in Jesus' name. It's 
name. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Amen. 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 I break this curse. I break these curses. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's not us. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I break these curses by the blood of Jesus. I break them. I break them. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I break them now in Jesus' name. I break them. I break them. It's the blood. 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 I break these curses in Jesus' name. I break them. We've been redeemed from the curse by the blood of Jesus. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I break these curses. I break them. 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 I break them by the blood of Jesus. I break them. I break them. I break them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That goes for your kids, too. I give thanks. I give thanks. You ready for me to pray for you? Huh? Father, I thank you. I break. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you she's been redeemed. I thank you by the blood of Jesus. She has been redeemed. I thank you by the blood of Jesus. She has been redeemed. I thank you by the blood. By the blood. She has been redeemed. She has been redeemed by the blood. 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 You starting to feel it? You're getting it. You're getting it. By the blood of Jesus. I get thanks. I get thanks. I get thanks. I get thanks. Is everybody breathing? It's only going to get better, ladies. And those of you out there, you can do the same thing at home. You got the same blood. You got the same Savior. You got the same gospel. You got the same faith. Join with our faith. Watch it again if you, if you need to. Watch it again. Join your faith with it and let God minister to you. And I thank you for coming. I thank you for joining us. And I'll see you next week.